Hello students, welcome back to the course on organizational behavior, individual dynamics in organization. We move to the second lecture of the last module where we'll discuss or look into individual factors affecting the voice behavior. If you recollect the previous session, we had actually introduced the topic of employee voice. We had looked into why the research in employee voice is necessary or vital or why it is the hot topic now. And we had also looked into different models that actually underscore what do you mean by employee voice. We have categorically tried to differentiate employee voice and whistleblowing also. When we actually look into employee voice, we have to understand whether this is a standalone concept or there are other factors involved in this. I'm Dr. Abraham Sirlisek. I'm a faculty at the School of Business, Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati. So let's look into today's theme. Is employee voice a standalone concept? So on this theme, we'll start today's discussion. Let's start with the first topic here, self-concept and voice. Please recollect all the sessions on self-concept. So we have detailed on uh, self-concept in the respective modules. So I don't want to go back to that particular discussion. Uh, rather, I will try to relate the self-concept and voice. When you look into self-concept and voice, some individuals actively avoid being seen as complainers. They feel that they it's not uh, up to them or it's not uh, their practice or their ideology or their way of work to complain about things. Or there could be also situations where they are a bit wary about others, like others perceive themselves as proactive in addressing unfavorable work situations. So many a time what happens is that some individuals do not find it comfortable to raise complaint. So this could be mainly because of, you know, the lack of confidence in yourself or maybe the social desirability factor. You don't want to look bad in the eyes of others, in the eyes of your boss, in the eyes of your co-workers, your subordinates. You want to be the ideal gentleman. This thought or this very basic idea actually creates the whole problem. When you look into self-concept, it relates to personal and cultural values as well as personality, which we'll discuss in detail. When you look into the past experience, that is also having an influence which the EVLN action is applied. I hope you remember EVLN from the previous class. EVLN means exit, or you can raise the voice, or you can be loyal to the system, or you can neglect the whole process and move away. And tend to reduce your quality, your work input and be a sufferer for your lifetime. Now let's look into another important aspect which is loyalty and voice. When you look into employees who haven't succeeded in expressing their concerns previously are more inclined to leave the job or exhibit neglect when facing dissatisfaction at work later on. So that's why we had to revise the EVLN concept or EVLN theory there. When you look into people who, who tried to do something or tried to raise the voice, they were severely thrashed or they couldn't, uh, you know, uh, recover still from the fact that nobody tried to rather appreciate. They were ridiculed for the basic fact that they were raising the voice. Now this gives or this makes a mark in the entire psyche of that particular individual. He or she might be white, might quite vary about, you know, raising his or her voice next time. And it is something like once bitten, twice shy. So when you are looking into such individuals, they tend to, you know, if there is some wrongdoing, some illegal practices, something which actually raises a red flag, they tend to neglect. They don't tend to raise the voice. They tend to neglect. There is no good in actually raising the voice because you raised a voice, you were ridiculed last time. This time, I am going to be indifferent. So given, a, given a, a situation, you might be actually reducing your work quality, you might be reducing your dedication to that program, but you are not going to raise the voice. So this could be 
the situation or understanding when it comes to loyalty and voice. You being a loyal employee, you want to stick on to the organization, but you understand that now if I have to raise the voice, better would be that I would leave the organization. To stick on to the organization, you take out the phenomenon of neglect. Please recollect what we have discussed in the last lecture. Now we look into the lower lo loyalty concept to the company increases the likelihood of quitting while higher loyalty is linked to a greater tendency to voice concern. So when you are actually looking for the betterment of the organization, you tend to actually raise voice. But you want to stick on with the organization, you tend to stick with neglect. Now let's look into the proactivity and voice factor. A natural inclination toward taking initiative and action is what is known as proactivity in its true sense. But when voicing the displeasure as a means to drive, change or enhance existing customers, this is what concerns most of the individual. Now, proactive mindsets drive them to address these discrepancies rather than passively accepting them. So if you are a person who is having a proactive mindset, they are actually looking into accepting the discrepancy. If you are a proactive person or having a proactive mindset, you are not going to take it lightly. You are an individual who wants a change you are an individual who wants to see the betterment of the organization. You are an individual who wants to actually improve the organization. In that case, what you do is you are not going to take things passively. You are going to be proactive. You are going to raise the voice. You are not going to quit unless and until the very problem or the issue is addressed and the organization gets the upper hand. Now let's look into attitude and voice. As I mentioned in the previous class, if you have uh, taken a note of that, concepts like employee voice, etc. have actually emerged or are evolving right now. So you don't have textbooks. So, so we tend to take support of sound empirical research. And here we look into the connection between attitudes and voice. When you look into attitudes and voice, when people are extremely satisfied or extremely dissatisfied with the jobs, they might not speak up as much. So they are, they are in the extreme version. They are not concerned or they are more concerned that they are not able to actually represent themselves. So those who feel moderately satisfied are more likely to voice their opinion. So they feel that there is still a chance to improve the system. There is still a chance to better the organization decision making. So they tend to raise a voice. Somebody who has, let's say, they are extremely satisfied. They think that everything is good, everything is fine. There is no point or there is no need actually to raise your opinion. Whereas people who are extremely dissatisfied on the other end of the uh, bipolar continuum. So when they are actually extremely dissatisfied and they have observed that there is a learned helplessness that comes into picture. So if someone strongly believes in being helpful, it strengthens the relationship between job satisfaction and speaking up. So you have a boss who is actually, you know, uh, you raise a voice, he or she takes up in the right way, discusses the problems, deliberates the issues with you, and then takes a decision taking into account your suggestions, your idea as well. So that would be a source, sense of, or that would be a source of motivation for you to speak up. So if they are more focused on protecting themselves, so there are some individuals you might have observed in your organization who play safe. They don't want to take any risks on them. So they, they are more focused on protecting themselves. It weakens this particular association between job satisfaction and speaking up. Now let's look into emotions and voice. We have looked into what specifically attitude and voice is or how it is related. We look into emotions and voice, external fear seems to encourage employees to speak up if they believe the supervisor is open to feedback. This is a necessary condition because if they think that their supervisor, if individuals feel that the supervisor is not open to feedback, then there is no point in actually telling him or her something. So showing that fear doesn't always stop people from voicing their thoughts. Feeling guilty about unethical behaviors 
unethical predispositions that benefit the organization can push the employees to speak up. So this is more of an extraneous motivation that is coming into picture where they are actually pushed to speak up, whether it's with suggestions or improvement or raising concerns. You are basically feeling guilty about unethical behavior and you are actually making it, uh, you know, point or you are, you, you are pushed to the limit that you have to answer that or you are actually taking up the issue in your hand. So emotions like empathic concern, empathic anger or guilt in response to someone's suffering can actually lead to voice. Now, there is also an associated negative relationship between emotional exhaustion and both promotive and prohibitive voice. Please recollect what we have discussed about the promotive and prohibitive voice in the previous class when personal resources such as having high job insecurity exist. So, this underlines what do you mean by or what is the essential connection between emotions and voice. Now, let's start looking into some of the personality factors. The first one being extraversion and voice. Extraversion, as you know, or you would uh, recollect from your uh, classes in personality module, extraversion refers to how active, assertive, energetic, enthusiastic, outgoing, talkative someone tends to be. So, when you are an extroverted individual, so you have a tendency prone to express your opinion or concerns in the workplace more than others. This is quite natural. Extroverted individuals are characterized as assertive and bold. They may be less likely to conform to the status quo and are more likely to take the risk of voicing their concerns. So, here we start actually looking into some of the essential personality factors personality traits and how they are related to employee voice. You are a person who is having extraversion as your personality trait. Please recollect the big five uh, traits and when you actually understand as yourself as a person or compare or analyze a person in your, in your organization who is, who is having the trait of extraversion, he or she is naturally going to raise his or her opinion or voice. Now, this is a natural consequence of what is going to happen. When such a thing happens, the extraversion as a trait kicks in and the individual is going to take responsibility of talking it out. So, there is a possibility that all those individuals who are having this trait are not going to neglect things, are not going to be just loyalists, are not going to, uh, you know, uh, exit, but rather voice the concern, the EVLN model. Now, let's look into another important trait, which is conscientiousness and voice. Ladies and gentlemen, conscientiousness for you is responsible, dependable and practical personality. So, such individuals will always be related to persistence, organization and motivation in goal-directed behaviors. Now, when you are actually seeking greater personal control in the jobs, they are actually leading you to increased voice behavior. So, what is that you are striving for? In the organization, you are taking control or you are making an attempt to take control. Please remember that you are the person who is in charge then you are the person who is responsible. I repeat, as always, with authority comes responsibility. And please try to take authority with responsibility. So, the, the problem today in organization is people are ready to take authority, but they are not ready to take the responsibility. And there is also a bigger threat, which goes seldom addressed, that you are being made responsible for something, but unfortunately, you don't have the grit, you don't have the power, you don't have the motivation to take the authority for that matter. If you are being given responsibility, please understand that you have to have the authority as well. You have to take the authority as well. Otherwise, you will be deemed a failure in the natural course of the organization or the event or the program. So, please understand when you look into some other traits like leader traits and behavior. Leader traits and behavior 
is all about display of helping behavior, creates greater employee self-efficacy. And the moment you are looking into aspects of self-efficacy, you are a person who can do things on your own. But sometimes you need to have the management support. You need to have the co-employee, co-worker support. In those cases, you are forced to raise your voice. So display of responsiveness to input, especially from employees with high self-efficacy, is a natural outcome. For that, when you are actually raising the voice, please try to use inclusive language. So many a time what happens with respect to leadership is, let us be very particular in this. If you have, you might have seen a leader in your organization who might be from a particular region and they are more, you know, talkative or interactive to people from their region. It might be for n number of reasons. One which I can think of is that he might not be comfortable with the with the common language. Let's say in in the case of uh, Indian uh, organization, English or Hindi, or they might not be willing to talk to others. There might be an inherent uh, inhibition towards discussing or interacting with others. So all these essential criteria or all these points could be the factors that, that determine how this person is behaving or interacting. So the way he is articulating, the way the leader is trying to, trying to talk or interact, if it's not inclusive, it is going to create a lot of problem. So please understand, the moment you are in a leadership position, the moment you are, you are a part of a committee where you are chairing the particular session or uh, the moment you are, uh, you know, some in some position which is having an impact on a larger audience, please try to use an inclusive language if you are raising the voice. This concern is mainly because if you are the person who is willing to raise the voice, if you are the person who is having the inherent capability and capacity to raise voice and you have the intent to, to raise the voice, but if you are doing it in an exclusive language, excluding somebody, then it might not be fruitful. In fact, it might defeat the very purpose what you begin with. So this could be another issue when it comes to leader traits and behavior. So I would like to conclude here the second session of the last module by just stating one thing. Please recollect in situations of uh, organizations where you are supposed to talk something, raise your opinion, raise your suggestion, raise your voice. We, we have seen that people exit, people quit. We have seen that people sometimes become loyal. They sometimes become extra patient. They might think that somebody is going to come and solve this issue for them. Or they might be neglecting the whole scenario. They might you know, display the learned helplessness behavior. And more than that, they tend to reduce the quality of their work. They tend to intentionally reduce the effort put in towards the execution of one particular task. More than that, be the person who raises the voice. And when you raise the voice, please remember, there are some inherent traits that will actually support you. Some inherent traits that will reinforce that, that particular, uh, you know, urge to actually raise voice. Please take help of those inherent urges. Please take support of that inherent factors. But please remember, when you raise voice, be reasonable and most importantly, be inclusive. Try to include, try to raise a voice in an inclusive language and this does not translate exactly to the literal translation of language but be an inclusive voice for the entire organization or for the entire committee or for the entire uh, group or team which you are representing. That's all from today's session. We'll see you in the next session with more on uh, employee voice and employee silence. Till then take care. Bye-bye. See you. Thank you.